What is going on guys, welcome back to the channel and today we are finally going to be doing another class guide, this time focusing on arguably one of the better classes in the game which is the officer class. Almost a year ago now, I made some class guides for the regular classes in Battlefront 2 and obviously in the last year there have been some drastic changes to not only the regular classes but also just the game in general and so with so many new or returning players coming to play Battlefront 2, I thought it was about time we went through all the classes again. Now, before we get started, you can see on screen what we're going through in this video, so first off I'll touch on their base abilities before moving on to their weapons and the stats for each blaster, as well as quickly touching on the mods for each weapon. Then we'll move on to four different star card combinations, or builds as most people call it, including a tank build, a support build, a battle point build, and my own personal cards as well. And then lastly, we will just go through some general tips for the officer class as well. So hopefully all the stuff you saw on screen is what you guys are looking for in a class guide and if it is then make sure to smash that like button if you do end up enjoying the video and make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications if you are new to the channel. So anyway, with all of that out of the way, we are going to get stuck right into it, and first off, I do just have to mention their regular health pool. So they have a base HP of 150, which is obviously just the average for the regular classes, with only the heavy class having a higher health pool. Now, as for their base abilities, the L1 ability is the Flash Grenade, which, exactly as the name suggests, will blind the enemies on detonation, and without any cards equipped, it will deal roughly 50 to 60 damage to an enemy, depending on how close it is when it explodes. Everyone knows how to use this grenade, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but just in case some people don't know, once you press L1 and throw it, it can be detonated on command using L1 again. So you can just use that to your advantage and blow it early or late in order to make it a little bit more successful. The star cards that are available for the L1 ability are an improved version of the flash grenade, the homing shot, and the diffuser. So if you choose one of these cards, it will actually replace the regular L1 ability. Moving on to their L1 R1 ability, and this one is the Battle Command, which causes you to buff any teammates within the area of effect, allowing them to gain 100 extra health and survive just that little bit longer. The star cards that are available for the L1 R1 ability are all variants of this Battle Command, and these are the Improved Battle Command, the Recharge Command, and the Blast Command. The Improved Battle Command essentially just has a much bigger area of effect, allowing you to buff more teammates, and it does also buff yourself as well, meaning that you will also gain that extra 100 HP. The Recharge Command recharges your teammates' abilities rather than buffing their health, which is really useful for a heap of different situations, and it's probably a little bit more team-oriented, and on top of that, it does also refresh your own abilities as well. As for the Blast Command, this one will completely refresh your teammates' blasters and put the bar into that gold overheat mode, pretty much meaning they can fire an unlimited amount of blaster bolts without reloading while the bar stays gold, so this one is great for holding down those objectives. Again, just like the other star cards, this one does also work on yourself as well. Now, as for the R1 ability, this one is the Blaster Turret, which is pretty self-explanatory. This will just deploy a turret that automatically fires at anyone within its line of sight. It shoots in small bursts rather than a constant rain of fire, so if they're in the line of sight for the entire burst of the turret, it deals anywhere from 100 to 150 damage depending on the range. The star cards that are available for the R1 ability are the Improved Blaster Turret, the Squad Shield, which I'm sure everyone already knows about, and the Disruption Card, which causes enemy weapons to overheat when it's activated, so these cards will replace that regular Blaster Turret ability. So that's actually it for all of the abilities and the cards that go hand in hand with those abilities. Now we're going to move on to the officer class's weapons and break down some of their stats. So first up we have their base blaster which actually changes depending on which faction you're playing and this is just your stock standard blaster so it has pretty even stats across the board. At close range it will deal 34 damage to the body and 64 damage to the head and at long range it will deal 17 damage to the body and 32 damage to the head. So again some pretty mid range stats there, not really good or bad which is to be expected from a base blaster. Honestly, I pretty much never use this blaster at all. Like I said, it's far from a bad weapon, but there are just a few other options that are pretty much going to beat it in most situations. So it's definitely a decent blaster for any of you that are new to the game and haven't unlocked some of the other ones yet. But once you do unlock the other weapons, this one can be forgotten with good reason. Moving on to the second weapon, which is the S5, and this one is actually really unique in that it's honestly more like a sniper than a pistol. However, it doesn't quite have the range of an actual sniper rifle. At close range, the S5 will deal 67 damage to the body and a massive 127 damage to the head, which is enough to actually two-hit kill every regular class and the aerial class as well, and then at long range it will deal 45 damage to the body and 85 to the head. So the actual drop-off at range is far less than most weapons, as they're usually cut in half, whereas these are obviously still pretty high even at range. 
Now as for attachments or mods as they're called, I would recommend going with the reduced recoil mod as this does have a pretty big kickback with each shot and then depending on your own personal preference, I'd also recommend the ion shot mod as well. However, like I said, this just comes down to whether or not you do like using the ion shot. This weapon is really well suited for mid-range situations. It's not something I'd recommend using as an actual sniper, but in saying that it's really good as a sort of mid-range sniper, as it will still deal over 100 damage to the head at that medium range. And so if you are a really good aim or like playing a little bit of a slower pace, then this is definitely a great blaster to use. Moving on to the third weapon, which is the Blurg, and this one is actually a two-round burst weapon that's really well suited at close to mid-range. At close range, it will deal 25 damage to the body and 48 damage to the head, and then at long range, it deals 12 damage to the body and 22 damage to the head, but keep in mind that that's actually per shot, and so with the two-round burst, that's essentially twice the damage output. And I'm sure you all know that there's an option for a four-round burst attachment, meaning it's going to deal 192 damage per burst to the head, which is obviously very powerful. As for the mods, I'd recommend using the reduced recoil mod, which does help keep those shots on target, and then I'd also recommend using the improved burst mod that I just mentioned, as this turns a pretty mediocre weapon into probably one of the best weapons for the officer class. Like I mentioned, the Blurg is really well suited for close to mid-range battles, as the damage drop-off at range is definitely not the greatest. Moving on now to the fourth and final weapon, which is the SE-44C, and personally I think this is the best blaster for the officer class, and arguably the best blaster in the game, at least for close quarters battles anyway. At close range, it'll deal 31 damage to the body and 58 damage to the head, and then at long range, it'll deal 15 damage to the body and 28 damage to the head. With no attachments, it's definitely still a decent blaster, but once you attach some mods, that's when this becomes one of the best in the game. The mods I'd recommend using are the improved cooling and rapid fire mods, as the rapid fire mod is where this thing really becomes a beast of a weapon, and this mod alone really sets it apart from the rest. Like I said, I'd rank this as easily a top 2 or 3 blaster in the game once you do slap on that rapid fire mod, so if you haven't unlocked this one yet, then definitely get on the grind to try and unlock the mods as soon as possible. So that is it for all of the blasters and the mods for the office a class, again they are all very unique and suited to their own playstyle, so I can't recommend it enough to give them all a go and figure out which one suits you the best. So now we're going to move on to the star cards, and like I said, rather than wasting time going through all the cards, I'm going to give you guys four different combinations or builds, which are all suited to some different types of playstyles. So starting off with the tank build, and as the name suggests, this card combination is going to be suited to a more aggressive type role that focuses heavily on survivability. This build is mainly for those of you who like going on kill streaks, or for those who find themselves unable to survive as all of the cards I'm going to mention will help you stay alive as long as possible. So the first card for this one is the Survivalist Star card and this reduces the amount of time it'll take for your health to start regenerating once you have taken damage by up to 40% when fully maxed. This really helps if you get in a gunfight, take some damage but you get the kill and then you need to quickly regen before getting back into another fight. So if you're an aggressive player then this is definitely a great card to choose. The second card for this build is the Improved Battle Command and this one allows you to actually buff yourself as well as your teammates meaning you can run around with 250 HP for a short amount of time whenever you use the ability which obviously helps a lot when it comes to survivability. As for the last card, this one is actually between two different cards which are the Squad Shield and the Diffuser Star cards. The Squad Shield is pretty self-explanatory, this one's going to give you a lot of protection when you need it, and then the Diffuser card is essentially the same thing but for explosives. When this is equipped, all explosives that come near you will get diffused, and so that's going to help you and your team survive on maps with a lot of close quarters areas. With these three cards equipped, you're going to be able to survive a lot longer than normal, and because of that, you can step up and play a much faster paced aggressive playstyle than you usually would. Moving on to the second card build, which is the support build, and this is for those of you who enjoy helping your teammates as well as playing your part in getting those objectives. The first card for this one is the Diffuser card that I just mentioned, as this can really be a lifesaver, and if you're in and around those objectives, there are always going to be plenty of explosives to diffuse. Now, the next card is going to be a choice between two different cards, which are the Recharge Command and the Improved Battle Command. This essentially comes down to both the situation and just your own personal preference. If you're defending an objective, then the Recharge Command might be a better choice so that you and your team can continue to use your abilities to help defend. Or if you're attacking an objective, then the extra HP from the Improved Battle Command can help your teammates stay alive and keep pushing. However, both cards do work for pretty much all situations anyway. As for the third card, this is again going to be a choice between two more cards, which are the Squad Shield and the Improved Turret Star cards. The Shield is again a pretty obvious one for helping your team play the objective, but some of you might be wondering about the turret since the space one is already pretty decent. The reason the improved version is good to use is that if you're trying to lock down hallways or objectives, it has a lot more health, meaning it's going to be much harder for your enemies to take it out, and because of that, it's pretty much just going to do its job a whole lot better. 
So, like I said, this build is perfect for those of you who enjoy playing the objective and helping their teammates out. So, if you are a team oriented player, then I definitely recommend giving these cards a try and even mixing and matching some other cards in there as well. Moving on to the third build, which is the Battle Point build, and just as it sounds, this is for those of you who want to try and race for those heroes or vehicles, or for those who want to try and save up thousands of Battle Points to use at the end of the game when the match is on the line. This build right here is the number one fastest way to get Battle Points with a regular trooper. If you're wondering how people always get heroes so fast, then this is most likely the setup that they're running, or at least something similar anyway. The first card is going to be the Officer's Presence card, which gives any nearby teammates a faster health regen, and because of this you also earn battle points for doing so. This card is the number one reason why Officers earn so many battle points, you literally just need to stand anywhere near your teammates and you're essentially just going to get free battle points for existing. The second card to use is the Improved Battle Command card that I mentioned earlier, and this one just gives you 25 battle points for each teammate that you buff, which really comes in handy at the start of a round. When the game starts, simply aim at as many teammates as you can, use your battle command and you'll usually gain about four or 500 battle points straight away and even more if a teammate does use their recharge command as well. As for the last card, this is a pretty obvious one and this is the Bounty Hunter card which is literally just designed to help you earn battle points at a faster rate so this one kind of speaks for itself and there's really not too much to talk about for this one. Like I said, this is the star card setup. If you want to try and get the first hero, you can still get heroes fast no matter what cards or class you use if you just play well, but this is still no doubt the easiest way to earn battle points. Now, moving on to the last build, and this is more just my own personal build that I tend to run most of the time. However, this is actually more of my secondary card setup as the battle point build that I just mentioned is my go-to setup about 80% of the time. So, like I said, this is more my secondary build rather than my main one. So, the first card is again going to be the Officer's Presence card. Not only for those battle points, but it is also just a great card to use as it can be very helpful for your teammates. The second card is the Recharge Command Star card that I mentioned earlier, and this one is great for not only helping your teammates push, but also for recharging your own abilities as well, which I really like because it allows me to play a little bit more aggressively and use my abilities far more often. As for the third card, I usually run either the Shield or the Diffuser for this card, but I have already touched on these ones, so I won't go into too much more detail. So that's pretty much it for all of the star cards guys, like I said there is still plenty of cards that I haven't even touched on as I don't really want the video to drag on for too long, but I do recommend testing out a bunch of the other cards as well if you do get a chance as there are some other very useful cards to use. The other thing is that you can still very easily mix and match combinations that I mentioned, which as you can see I kind of do that with my own personal build by running almost the same as the battle point build, but just with a few little changes in there, so definitely have a go at mixing and matching some different card combinations as at the end of the day the ones I mentioned are just a starting place for those who aren't too sure. Now, before we finish up, the last thing I want to touch on is your playstyle. The officer class is crazy good at both playing the objective and racking up a whole lot of kills and battle points, and so I can't stress it enough that you should play very aggressively when you're playing as the officer class. Whether you want to get up on those front lines with the SE44C or the Blurg, or sit back with the S5 and play a little bit more of a support based role, there are plenty of different ways that you can effectively play the officer class. Regardless of how you play, though, you should be trying to help lead your team to the win, making the most of all their team oriented abilities and being the one to lead the charge and try and rally the rest of your team behind you. So that is going to do it for this one guys, hopefully these tips can help you all out and if they did then make sure to leave a like down below to help support the channel. I will of course be doing a specialist guide as well as that is the fourth and final class left to cover, so keep your eyes peeled for that one over the coming weeks. If you are new to the channel then feel free to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any more Battlefront 2 videos or live streams. Thank you all so much for watching, you guys have a great day and I'll catch you all in the next one.